and it's I'm looking for communication, obviously, and insight from you guys as we go through this. Um, and as we go through, I really think we need to kind of raise our hands on particular areas that need to be addressed. Any items, any action items that require a body, uh, we need to kind of figure out who that is today. Um, the official date, Peter, is May 20th. Is that correct on reopening? Um, uh, restaurants, barbershops, hair salons, retail, et cetera, in town. And this list that we have here, basically, if I had to put a, a, an arching umbrella over everything, it really is how do we communicate uh, uh, to the market? Um, there are other uh, uh, sub, other panels that are, uh, are under action under number 10 that we'll talk to at the end. And uh, I think Gary will be joining us uh, to discuss those. So let's just get started. Pete, I know that you mentioned to me this morning that uh, item one is listing media that we can use to publish the state guidelines. Again, from a communication perspective, any media that we can use, be it social media, uh, Wesso Life, um, Tony Martino, I think I had mentioned um, the Rare Reminder uh, last Thursday, which I think is great. What do we have in works right now, Pete? I know you had mentioned a couple of things to me the, earlier this morning. Uh, Gary on Friday, I believe, met with uh, the Weathersfield Life reporter. Uh, I, I'll, I'll let Gary speak to that maybe when he joins us. Uh, I wasn't part of that, but um, he was going to mention uh, the work that's going on in anticipation of Wednesday. I have a, uh, a meeting set up at 1.30 today with the reporter for the rare reminder. So uh, maybe before we leave today, we um, lay out the message that we want to get out there so that, it, that um, I make sure I incorporate that into our conversation. So those are the two things that um, since, um, since Thursday that we've worked on. Okay, what other outlets, uh, guys, ladies, um, should we be exploiting others other than Wellsville Life and Rear Reminder? Mark, we got no, the great outlet. Do you think we should media. put the uh, governor's messages up on there? What was that, Tony? I says, we have the great elm. You think we should take the things we were given Friday and put them out there and direct people to there? Yeah, that's certainly, uh, that is one outlet. I agree. Um, um, so getting it up on great elm, if we can talk to Jesse, Pete. Um, so are we, would, would we just put out the PDF of the, um, of the guidelines and Pete, your, um, I forgot the name of the form, excuse me, the, the outdoor activities um, application. Would we put both those things potentially? Yeah, we, may, we, we may meet, need to draft up just a little paragraph explaining, you know, uh, what that's all about. But I can work with Jesse on that. Okay, I think it's a good idea. Um, how about the town's social media? I know we actually have Leslie Civitello made sure we had social media. This is uh, that's a good look there, Leslie. Um, what can we do on our social media side? I think if we 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 all just jump in and start um passing it on you know if we grab it from the great elm or the message we want to do if you just the combination of the people that are on social media and you keep pushing it out there it's worked several times to go farther and farther you know just a message pass it on i got a friend that has 2500 friends and most of them are weatherfield people so that's okay. something pushing forward well grassroots um, definitely can be, go ahead please um, uh, I think it was Friday, I, I sent all that information out in an email blast, which has, I think, 1,500 participants on that uh, from the Chamber uh, website. So I sent that out, what the town is requiring, if they you know, want to reopen and have extra space outside. I sent all that out. So I can put that on our uh, Facebook page as well. Okay. Awesome. Um, any other ideas? Mark, we did a list of all the different Facebook pages and the Weathersfield Police has the most followers. It's 10,000. So I agree if we had one post that we could all share. Um, there's also a list of what's going on Weathersfield, the Nextdoor app. Um, there's a lot of different ways. And then WEC has 850 people on our email list and we're happy to share things on ours if we have that. Okay. Um, uh, Chief, uh, no issues with us on uh, utilizing um, your opportunity? No problems at all. We'll, we'll be glad to post it. 
Great. Who do we coordinate that with, guys? Because that's one of the things I want to do today that I think that's a great list, Kimberly. And in my world, if you bring up an idea, I typically go, okay, you have to do it now. Uh, that's pretty much how I roll. Um, if you don't have an issue on that, and Pete, I think it kind of goes to the first point. We probably should, maybe you and I uh, and, and others uh, out of this meeting can just put together maybe a paragraph of what we're doing that this is the application. You know, if you're going to do things outside, is, these are the state guidelines. This is a, a link to the state guidelines uh, as well. That way, I think you bring up a good point, Kimberly. Let's have a, the same message go out to all these different sources. Um, so maybe we can just work on a very simple paragraph on what we're what we're rolling out. We can do that maybe after this meeting, or, or if you've got time early this afternoon, just a quick uh, a message on that. Okay. Um, so on real reminder, Peter, you're meeting with them today. That's correct. Yes, one thirty today. And Gary, and Gary met with Weathersfield Life already. Yes. Gary, are you on the call? I don't think I see him at the moment. Um, the, um, do you know whether or not it got deep into, do you know what subject matter? I know you weren't at that. I don't want to be communicated with you on what was discussed. What was the event of the uh, interview? I don't know. Okay. Um, Tom's, Tom's idea on grassroots, uh, once we get this memo put together with the proper link uh, in that PDF, Peter, of the reopen guide, the uh, outside application guide, um, let's get that to all the members that were on the email, including obviously everybody here. And Tom, you're right that now you could you have something that you can physically say, this is the message from the town, this is the official link, and we can keep that message uniform. Um, so that's great. So that kind of handles uh, item two, person responsible for contacting uh, each media outlet. We're kind of there. Other than rare reminder, uh, grassroots, um, the web, um, uh, the web Facebook, the town of Weathersfield Facebook. Any other outlets we should be? How about the uh, WCTV, Peter? We can certainly do that as well. Yep. I can work um, with the, I, the IT department and uh, assist us with that. Okay. Mark, a Would question. We just run, we um, just run. Mark, I, I, rec I recollect I a that, um, well, I recollect that, that one of the things we did, boy, I'm, I'm crossing out here, but fading away. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, disappeared. Okay. Uh, I recollect that we had put together or putting together through the assessor the names of all the businesses in town. We we're trying to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, we have a, a mailing. Um, we have a complete mailing ad address, uh, but not necessarily uh, a comprehensive email database for all the businesses in town. We have our own um, database that Denise maintains, so we will certainly use that to send this information out as well. So, but uh, it's not um, by any means a, a complete listing of the businesses in town. No, I understand um, that, but it's a start. Yes. Hey, Peter. Yeah, one of the things, as you know, uh, that e that we're doing is the um, uh, the the reach program. I forget what we called it, Peter. We had a nice name for it, but where we have reaching out to business mailer going out. And unfortunately, I and I'm Peter just talking because I think it relates. We may want to reformat a little bit on that letter that's going to go out to the business owners on on capturing their email and saying in this situation where we're trying to reach you, I think we've got an even better case for them to provide their email. Uh, because it would be nice if we had that done now. No one saw this coming, obviously, but part of that outreach was to capture that email. So I think we should maybe modify that language or maybe even just kind of couch a, a big reason why we're sending this out is to be able to reach the business community quick. Uh, please give us your email. Uh, that's for another conversation. Hey, Mark, um, if, Mark yes. if we get something um, written and we do have it in a certain location, I know that we have a, a, a sign right on the Celestine Highway uh, that can, uh, I could probably get either the opening of Weathersfield, go to this website posted right on the Celestine Highway that flashes. And that, you'd be amazed how many cars go by the Celestine Highway. And uh, I could probably get that done within maybe today, as long as everything's up. So that'd be a good yeah. one too. Yeah, I think we would just, you so say you would just put the town's website up there for reopening information. Reopen Weathersfield and whatever, 
you know, Deb wrote a good letter. I got it. I did get yours, Deb. It's something that would direct it to getting all the information, you know, email, social media, and then right on the Celestine Highway with the sign that's blinking, showing it. I, I should be able to get that up today. Okay. Well, how big How big of a message can you post on that thing? That's, that's what I got to check. That's why, okay. you know, I'm trying to think if we could direct it, something like yeah, opening weather seal, the date, and, and something like that, you know. Okay. Okay, so. great. Um, so on item number three, unit message, um, I think we're kind of, we've, we've kind of touched on that. Peter and I and anybody else would like to join, Peter will send an invitation out on if we want to just uh, somebody take a shot at maybe on what this paragraph would read about that unified message. Um, and I do think, and I spoke with Gary this morning um, on, a, on a spokesperson, um, that if there's anybody from any of the media or whatnot that has an interest that the, probably should be one person to go to and that should be able to parlay our message. And I, I floated a couple of uh, ideas earlier today. Um, if anybody would like to uh, potentially serve as a spokesperson, um, uh, we're, we'll be more than happy to, um, to consider that. This is a rough idea. We may not even do it, um, but it's something that I think if it gets to a point where we really need to have a um, you know, someone to take the phone calls, um, I think it's probably good to discuss that now. Um, item number four, and um, educating the public, uh, the public on proper protection needed to shop, and, and that it's safe to visit businesses who are reopening properly. I think that needs to be part of our message um, uh, to the community, Pete. Whenever, uh, if you speak with Rare Reminder today, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think those are a couple of really important uh, talking points um, that the um, the community needs to do their part, and if we're going to maintain to flatten the curve, I know it's an overused term now to ad nauseum, but we want to keep this thing low and keep the incidents in Weathersfield low, which we've been blessed with. People still need to follow the proper guidelines when they shop. Um, that they need to do their part, and the shop owners need to do their part to make sure people aren't violating that. I think that needs to be part of what we need to communicate. Um, uh, and, I, and I'll mention that to Gary uh, as well. Um, provide outdoor activities application PDF to multiple locations. Deb, were you able to, fill, uh, to actually send that out? Is that what you were saying before to those 1,500 uh, in, uh, businesses? Yeah, I, I, I sent it out. There's a lot of information in that email. And my thought is to, I'm gonna send it out again and consolidate it a little bit by subject, but you know, I, I think it's better, I like to follow what everybody else is doing. So however we do that, that's great. Um, one other thing is I'm, I am getting calls this morning um, from people, from businesses looking for PPE products. Do we have a focal point where we can send them to? I, I, Maybe Anthony Dignati can, Anthony, are you there? Yes, Peter. Did you hear the question about PPEs? Yes, the state has um, put together a list of vendors. I can uh, send that Excel spreadsheet to you. So the business, there's uh, quote certified vendors that the state has authorized. I think these will, vendors, they'll give the people the best possible deals on the products. So I can send that out to you. Oh, great. Thank you so much. And then you can just forward it to it. Let me actually, I'll start working on it now. Thanks. Uh, Deb, that's a great question, a great, uh, uh, a great uh, point there. Um, Tony, can you, uh, the, Peter, do you think we should include that in this um, item? I mean, if we have a link to PPE, that could be something that I think should go into that uh, item that we send out as part of our, um, our release. Uh, is that just some links, Anthony, or is it an actual, you said a spreadsheet, is it num numerous uh, companies that provide PPE? Yeah, it was like hundreds of vendors. So I can, I'm pretty sure it was on an Excel spreadsheet, but I'll look it up now as we go along and I'll send that out to you. Then you can just uh, forward it. Also, the Connecticut Business and Industry Association, the CBIA, had a program for masks. And a lot of our companies um, took advantage of that because the product actually yes. comes to me and I've been delivering it. So I think they still have masks available. So you can direct them to the CBIA website. I believe it was a business um, with under uh, 50 employees. Qualified right, it was. Yeah, I think that. They also are doing uh, thermometers if Correct. anybody needs to. Okay. 
Okay, I'll work on the list right now and get it out to you. That'll be great. Thank you for that. Um, that's excellent. I'm glad that came up. Um, thank you, guys. Um, coordinated efforts on minimizing log jams and any duplication, and this really goes out to um, town staff. I mean, ideally to, to you, Marshall, uh, and to you, Charles, on the health side, and on P and, uh, P, um, uh, not P and Z, Charles and Charlie. Um, is there anything that we can help with? Um, I know that Peter, this, the unified form, uh, the outdoor application form, I think, is a great idea. It meets, it's streamlined, it's everything that we need on one eight and a half by 11. Is there anything that you guys need assistance on that you need manpower on or additional uh, people to noodle on on uh, the actual process once people start bringing things into town and applying? Is there anything that we can be helpful on at the EDIC? I, I think the most important thing is just uh you know, making the business community aware that we do have a process in place. So spreading the word and communicating that message, I think is important for us just to make sure uh, the word is out there. The, um, we did set it up in a way uh, to expedite it so that the submission goes to all of the affected departments at the same time, rather than coming to one person and that person distributing it. So uh, we did anticipate that because we only have 10 days uh, to set it up, uh, you know, uh, in, in an expedited way. So uh, I think, um, you know, doing it that way will will speed up the process pretty dramatically. So, how many applications uh, have we gotten on the restaurant side, where which seems to be the most um, complex business to open under the guidelines outside of the salons and everything else? We have. Um, we have we don't have any pending because the form only went out Friday. We require people to uh, use this new form, but I anticipate probably by uh, later today or tomorrow we'll have about half a dozen. I don't anticipate it's going to be a an overwhelming you know response, but um, nevertheless, um, uh, there are a good number of people who have expressed an interest in it. So, okay, um, that's on the uh, restaurant Mark? side. How about Yes, please. Just uh, one thing, Peter, we just have to, and I don't know if we want to publicize this or just take on a case by case basis, but I have noticed, I noticed Saturday actually just driving down the Celestine Highway, one of our restaurants did some construction in the building that I can see from the, from the outside, so I'm going to have to go visit them. So I just want to be cautious that even though we want these folks to open back up, that this is really, they still have to coordinate with the building department, health, myself, zoning, whoever to make sure if they're gonna do some kind of temporary construction, because especially in a restaurant setting, they start putting walls up and things like that. There's hood systems in there that are designed in a certain way. So, you know, we could cause more health or fire issues, you know, just having these people do temporary construction than, you know, than we're trying to prevent with the virus. So we just have to walk, you know, watch some of these facilities to make sure. So in the next couple of days, I'm gonna go out in the field and try to check on some of these establishments to make sure they're not doing you know, construction without our knowledge. Yeah, and our uh, the other thing is, go ahead, Charlie. I said our inspectors are actually going out there too, uh, just taking a look, seeing how people are operating out in in the environment. The other thing is, these outdoor uh, the cell liquor have to be permitted by liquor control. There's a whole procedure, an application for the liquor control commission uh, to <clears throat> be able to serve uh, alcohol outside. Okay. Um, Tony, that popped something in my head. The list that you have, Tony, on the PPE providers, are they able to take, are these, are these providers that are used to selling, you know, cases of product versus maybe a small business needs 15 or 20? Are they, is it open to anybody, to an individual? Or I just wanted to make sure yeah, that we're not getting There's a huge list of vend, um, vendors. Granger was even on it. So it's all, you know, it's probably all companies that some of our businesses may already do business with. They just don't know how to reach out to them. But yeah, I'm okay. sure just like anything else, if you buy in bulk, you're going to get better pricing. So some of the businesses could go to, you know, can buy together maybe, you know, to help defer the cost. Got it. Um, number seven, post the state guidelines on this town site. Uh, media, great on. We've got that handled. Um, one of the items here, uh, and I wanted to get some input from the group, obviously, is what we're, I'm contemplating, and again, it's just a rough idea, not fully formed, but is to 
publish when we send out this information um, that we have maybe a couple of Zoom meetings um, that are one maybe catered to the restaurant uh, side, another one that's catered to uh, the salons, another one into regular retail. Maybe they can be combined. Again, I would like to get some input, but where we can get health and zoning and fire uh, and permitting and everybody on that panel and just have kind of an, an open forum where it can be not only an informational item, but, but a PR item um, as well. Um, I'm, I'm wondering what, what you think, if that would, are we, is it a can of worms? Those scenarios admittedly can, can, um, can be interesting on what can develop, uh, but I just was curious what your thoughts might be uh, on doing something like that. Charlie, I saw you nodding your head. You want to weigh, weigh in, Charles Brown? Yeah, I mean, we're open to be able to, to do any of those things. And I think one forum with every all the principals involved, you, you know, we can get a lot done at that point. Um, so, you know, I'd be happy to have uh, Barbara Gelati, who's our supervising sanitarian, uh, be on the uh, panel for something along those lines. Okay. Any other, infra, any other questions or concerns or, on that particular idea? Um, Mark, I um, did touch base with some of the business owners over the weekend, very casually, because quite honestly, I what didn't have a handle on the, these meetings myself. So, and the the response I got was great, but they would like to know what the content was. You know, they're kind of in a uh, flex themselves and don't have a lot of time on their hands, but. Um, I got the impression that they don't want to sit and listen to. Not that they're not uh, empathetic to it, but you know, say a nail salon, what they need to do when they're trying to open up a huge restaurant, or so that was the feedback I got. So, are you saying that you think the business owners would be re would doing a restaurant meeting for the restaurant owners, and then one for salons and whatnot? You think that would be more beneficial? Well, that's what they're thinking, but I, I don't know if that's time effective. You know, I think if we could. Uh, gear the headline to them to make it all encompassing, maybe that would work because I, I, I'm not sure. It's just the time effective. I wasn't sure on that answer. So I just said we're in the beginning stages and I get back to them today or tomorrow. Well, maybe we could do something where it could be, you know, from uh, 9 to 9.30, if you're a hair salon, you call in. And if you're a restaurant, you call in 10 to 10.30 type of a thing where we just break it out in different uh, sessions and people can pop in when they want to. But I think that's a good idea. If I'm opening up a restaurant, I really don't need to hear about somebody's cuticles, I guess, is what you're trying to say. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, understood. Um, any other input on that, guys? Yeah, a good idea, bad idea? Um, any more input on that? You no, know, it's complicated. But some of these rules I've read them uh, a little bit complicated. And I think it would be a good idea that the idea of a meeting, uh, you know, set up between the different uh, uh, businesses uh, could be could be helpful. Because you just read them, uh, it's going to be hard for them to understand what they have to do. It's not, it's not that clear. So okay. someone with some not real knowledge of this, Peter, I hate to put stuff on you, but whoever else it is uh, to be able to to host such a a session I think will be very helpful to businesses. Okay. Great. Um, Deb, we've kind of already handled number nine coordinating with the chamber um, um, already. Uh, and, you know, uh, the private um, and public alliance here is really important. And anything we can do to support your efforts and vice versa, we want to do. So if you have anything that's, you know, floating around in your head that you'd like to you know, say, could we do this? This is a spaghetti against the wall type of scenario because we really don't have a precedent to go by. So anything that's popping around in your head that you think may be of importance, um, please please don't be shy. Um, we, we just finished up uh, uh, the best campaign for Weathersfield and obviously we can't have an annual meeting and do that like we normally do. So. Uh, today, after this meeting, um, I'm going to be visiting some businesses. So I would 
to have this meeting. So I'll pick their brains on exactly what they're looking for and what they need and what they're, I'll get back to everybody. Okay, great. Um, we want to put together um, uh, an FAQ type of a uh, of an item too. Were we, Peter, did we scuttle that idea or are we going to do that? Uh, what did, I know we discussed that today. I don't see it on my, uh, I, uh, on my list here. Um, I, I think rather than um, an FAQ, we probably just need to refer to the state guidelines and existing okay, documents right. so the message doesn't get um, trans transposed. I'm a little leery of um, changing something that's already been out there. I do understand that the state uh, will likely be coming out with some um, either revised or additional uh, guidelines at some point. Um, no date has been um, established yet, but obviously as that information comes out, we would also uh, be incorporating that and, and getting it out there to the business community. But I would just, uh, I, I would be hesitant to, you know, because I, I really don't know what the FA, what the frequently asked questions are, because we're still at the beginning of that process. So. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. Um, you're refreshing my memory now, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Um, outside, so obviously, you know, um, uh, Gary Evans, town manager, came up with a list of, uh, I think, four different uh, um, committees. Obviously, on the, on the business side, EDIC, RDA is going to handle this, which is obviously what this meeting is about. Uh, but there are two other items uh, uh, that require um, more um, uh, human capital. Uh, social and youth service provisions of basic needs, health and supports. Um, Gary is looking, I know he BCC'd, I think everybody on the phone call last week. <laughs> if you have an interest in these other areas, um, he is looking for um, um, people with a passion and some um, uh, brain power uh, to expend uh, on that particular uh, arena. I'm glad um, uh, the Board of Ed is represented here by Mr. Emmett, good to see you this morning. I'm wondering if you can share with us one of the items, and I think it's probably Maybe one of the biggest ones, maybe even bigger than the than the businesses opening up, is opening up the schools uh, because of the sensitivity of it. Um, what do you need, or if you would like to use this as a form to kind of tell us where you're at, what you need, um, maybe just give us kind of a, a thirty thousand foot view on what's going on from your. Sure, sure. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as you all know, the uh, governor's executive order has closed schools for the remainder of the 2019-2020 uh, school year. Um, our first uh, major challenge, obviously, is to provide the class of 2020 with a graduation that meets the auspices of um, executive orders uh, 7N and 7X. So we're working on that right now. We're also awaiting guidance from the state with regard to what summer school programming would look like. Um, so currently, our students are um, participating in a distance learning program. Uh, so we have rolled out uh, technology devices uh, to all of our students with the exception of some in grades K and one who are using their own devices and students are learning remotely. Um, we have our teachers, our uh, administrators, paraprofessionals and tutors engaged in the learning process now. That will go through uh, the last day of school, which is June 15th. In terms of reopening, um, we are developing a committee now within our structure on the Board of Education uh, to develop plans for the reopening process in the fall. Uh, I will be the first to tell you that it is not clear as to whether or not we will open in the fall or if we will open with restrictions that are such that cause us to come up with a different schedule. So we're looking at a variety of different options at this point in time, such as what would happen if I'm limited in the number of students I could put on a bus? What would happen if I'm limited in terms of the number of students I could put in a classroom? How might I revamp my breakfast and lunch delivery to uh, maintain social distancing guidelines? What would my extracurricular activities, what would my fall sports look like um, with social distancing? So um, there are a lot of, um, factors that we're going to have to weigh. Uh, we continue to work with the uh, State Department of Education, uh, awaiting guidelines from them. I should get the guidelines on summer school uh, later on this week. Um, we are already planning on a virtual summer school in the event that we can't open. I do know that our community provider, the Y, is submitting a, an application to the state uh, 
early childhood office for a total of 80 students uh, at Hanmer Elementary School this summer for a uh, summer camp. Uh, that's going to be uh, hinging on whether or not the state approves that. If they do, uh, they will have to be in cohorts of 10. They will have to wear uh, PPE. Um, there will not be any field trips and there will not be any access to the pool. So the typical summer program that we've seen in the past is clearly not going to happen. So that's the 30,000 foot view. I, I don't want the grassroots one, that's for sure. Um, the, the feed on the street, is there anything, I know Gary has put out feelers out there, is, um, are you forming any particular groups or um, committees or whatnot that require you know, interested, qualified people uh, to participate in? Or are you still kind of uh, formulating that? Yeah, we're in the process of formulating that right now. Um, I might welcome having somebody from the EDIC on just to provide support and, and some guidance. Um, our plan is to obviously involve our nursing supervisor, representative from the Central Connecticut Health District, our town physical services department in the event we have to do any type of physical restructuring in our buildings. Um, administrators and uh, teachers as well in terms of the curricular piece and uh, the technology piece. So I'd be, I'd certainly welcome someone on our committee. If somebody's interested, if they could please reach out to me, just uh, email me, please. You don't want to give your personal cell phone out to the group? <laughs> Everybody's already got it. 250-5646. Give me a call. <laughs> Okay, um, what I'd like to do guys is just open up the floor. These are things that kind of have been popping around in my brain I'm there and I'm sure I haven't covered everything here for sure. Is there anything um, uh, as a group that you would like to suggest or, or visit? Mark, can I just ask for clarification? Are we going to be offering these virtual meetings to the businesses? We just don't know the details of it yet? Or should I hold? That. I'm sorry, Deb, you broke up there. Uh, could you oh, repeat that? Are we definitely going to offer these virtual meetings to our businesses? We just don't know the details of it yet, or should I hold off mentioning it? Um, Peter, what are your, I mean, unless you've got, Gary thought it was a good idea, but, um, you know, we need to get buy-in from anybody, everybody. Do you think it would be a value? Yeah, yes. Um, I. I didn't chime in um, as Charles was talking, but uh, I think, uh, you know, there should be a team of town staff members participating in that. So we can, we can organize that offline and then figure out a, a good day to do that. It's probably sooner, sooner than later. Um, we need to do that. So. So Deb, I think unless you hear otherwise, um, I, I, but I think at this point, because you, there's the devil is always in the details. I don't want to promise something and not commit to it. Let, okay. let us chat through and make sure there isn't anything legal or anything goofy that'll, you know, a bear trap that we step in. I don't want us to look silly. We look silly. I can look silly enough on my own. I don't need my help doing it. Um, so why don't you just wait to hear, get a message back from Peter, Peter or I um, okay. on the, my guess is it'll be a go and then we'll figure out, but I think your input on, um, on maybe us staging it and doing different Maybe having, I think, at least two dates, Peter, that maybe one in the morning and one in the evening uh, to accommodate people's uh, potential schedules. Um, and then and then maybe do a, a, a salon one, you know, for 20 minutes and restaurants and whatnot. We'll, st we'll step it up that way so people can dial in uh, accordingly. I uh, see um, Leo Gugliotti once again has joined us. Maybe he wanted to chime in uh, if, if he, from a business point of view, if he thinks there's value in doing that, Leo? Not to put you on the spot, but. Leo might be sharpening his scissors. That's true. Let me see if I can un. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that it would be beneficial for the businesses to be involved in the phone call. All I have to tell you is, like, you know, especially, you know, we're opening on Wednesday. I'm spending, I spend the whole weekend and the next two days getting things ready. So it's gonna be very difficult to get a specific time that can work for every business, but I think it'll be beneficial, yes. Okay. Uh, Leonardo, thank you and good luck with the opening. I, there's a lot of people that need haircuts. You're gonna be a busy person. I can't wait, thank you. <laughs> um, 
Mr. Mayor, I don't know if you wanted anything uh, to share with the group, um, uh, but I figured I would, I would pass you the baton. No, thanks, Mark. Um, no, you guys are doing a great job. I, I do appreciate it. It's going to take uh, a Herculean effort to get uh, uh, May 20th here and enrolling. Um, you know, we have less than a week to do it, and uh, just a couple days, you know. Um, but uh, you guys are doing a pretty good job uh, at getting it going so far. Uh, I think uh, the biggest thing, and I kept hearing it uh, throughout, and I'm dealing with folks on the phone right now, uh, the number one thing I'm hearing is guidance. We need guidance for this. We need guidance for that. So, um, you know, I think we're at the mercy of those uh, above us. And, uh, you know, once we get uh, some clearance and some uh, better uh, um, idea of where to proceed and how best to proceed, we can pass that along to not only the town residents, but to the businesses uh, as we start to reopen. I thank you guys for, uh, for being part of this. And uh, I know Gary has been in contact with you, Peter, uh, a lot on this. And uh, as we're working together, hopefully we can come up with a, a structured plan that everybody can follow on. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, anybody, else, uh, anybody else have anything to share? Uh, at this point? Um, Mark, I have one thing to share. Um, one thing that I was just thinking is, um, what about um, really engaging people on Twitter as well um, with like a, you know, a hashtag reopen Weathersfield uh, type of, of tag that any one of us can use, all of us can use. Um, and really, as the information begins to get disseminated, um, just continue to use reopen Weathersfield or, or something similar. Uh, but, you know, we can kick it off with kind of a unified hashtag that um, anybody can use and hopefully people will piggyback and retweet. Um, I know not everybody is on Twitter. Uh, many of us are. Many of us are not. I understand that. Uh, but it is still one of the fastest ways to get information moving. Um, if businesses knew that there was a reopen uh, Weathersfield kind of, you know, kind of momentum going on Twitter, uh, they might be a little bit more apt to follow that to see if there's something new coming out that they should be following. Um, I think that's a great idea. Um, do you want to just be the seat on that, Marco, and be the, um, are we okay with reopen Weathersfield? Is that too long? Um, is it, is it, um, but I think you, by the way, you don't need anybody's permission. You can just go ahead and do it. This is, a yeah, if, but I think yeah, it's my thought idea. is just to use something that's, that, you know, that's consistent, right? So that sure. we're not all using different ones and then people have to, you know, hunt around like, which one should I really be? after and following. Um, you know, as I've mentioned in the past to a lot of people in this group, um, I very often have, you know, just a saved Weathersfield follow that I always do. So if anyone ever posts something that has Weathersfield in it, I find out about it right away. Um, it is one of the fastest ways to find out information for sure, as we know. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to help out with it um, to get things kicking and, and also to reference a lot of these sites that we mentioned where we're gonna be posting uh, things on the town site or elsewhere, it's not a problem. Great. Um, well, I think we decide. Hashtag reopen Weathersfield. We're good with that. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, thank you for that, Marco. Sure. Have at it. Brooke, your head couldn't have sh shaken any more rapidly, so I know you're on board. Um, okay. So, Peter, um, you and I need to convene, and anybody else, we can send an invite out. You know, we can we can do this by committee, uh, or we can just you know, you and I can dig it out and just it's really not. Frankly, I think we just formulating that paragraph that we want to put together on um, the application, the outside application form. Um, these are the state guidelines in it. Just a very simple thing we can put that together and let's begin to get that piece out. Get that over to Deb so she can get that to her group. Um, we need to talk about the virtual meetings on and uh, the, when we would do those. I understand from uh, Mr. Gugliotti that it is going to be difficult. These people are going to be, you know, it's been, to, you know, at a dead stop and now hopefully it's going to be rip roaring. Uh, but so we may have to be flexible on how many times we do this uh, meeting. I think it's a phenomenal way, not only to give great information, but I just want to show that the town is actively involved and really wants to help things move forward, which I know we all do. Um, also, we need to consider from the EDIC, uh, for somebody to communicate uh, and be potentially part of uh, Mr. Emmett's uh, group at the Board of Ed, um, and we, we'll discuss that as well. That's all I've got, guys. Um, Mark? Anything else? Yes, Tony. 
Mark, just one quick thing. I just took a phone call. The like, only reason I answered it because I saw it said Marshalls. Um, they just called looking for uh, their occupant load, which I'll um, give them later this afternoon. But I was just talking to the manager, and even though the 20th is coming, they're not. They're at least a week away from being prepared to open. So even though the 20th is coming, a lot of these facilities, retail establishments, are still they still have a lot of work to do to prep their building. So, you know, so I think you're going to see some open on the 20th, but you're going to see a lot of establishments still not prepared to be able to open on the 20th because this sort of came pretty fast. Understood. Uh, Patrick, uh, anything to share? Yeah, I think Mike said it the, the best. Um, from uh, last meeting to this meeting, it is a lot of work, but I think, you know, with everyone we have on right now, I don't see a reason why we can't be informative and, and helpful, especially to all the local businesses in Weathersfield. Agreed. All right, guys. Anybody else have anything to share? If not, we will conclude. Mark, the only thing I would say is that we just need today, we need a takeaway. From this meeting, we need that the written message and what we want to post. We all have to, like Deb's looking, you know, Jim Citran has 10,000 followers. We got to get that out today. Yep. Um, I know you know that. I just want to make sure we, the takeaway is we got to come up with a message. No, I, I understand. And you scare me. So um, I'm going to listen to your words, Tom. Yeah. There's two of them. Be careful. <laughs> That's right. Um, anything else, group? All right. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I appreciate it. Um, I'm, we may have another meeting coming up um, and, and ask you guys to participate again, depending on what might uh, develop over the next day or two. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you guys, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Great job. Great. Mark. Yep. Bye-bye. everybody. Bye.